Ben Burgess joins us. He is host of Give Them an Argument, author of Canceling Comedians While the World Burns, and he joins us today from the heartland. I'm just going to guess that you're in Michigan. Uh, yes, probably for a couple more weeks. For a couple more weeks. And you're off to a baseball game. Would this be a Detroit Tigers game? Uh, <laughs> that would be much better. Uh, this is a Lansing Lugnuts game. The Lansing Lugnuts. And which division yes. are this is? Is this the uh, old Caucasian League? <laughs> is this like a team from the old Caucasian Leagues from the 20s? It might as well. Lansing? Who are the Lansing Lugnuts? Uh, they're, a, they're a minor league baseball team. In I, I, I know they're a minor league baseball team. I you enjoy. put that part together all on its own. Yeah, I, I could do that. I could put that together. I love minor league baseball. Yeah. It's much more enjoyable than seeing the big leagues because it, it, it feels like what baseball should be. Not everything has to be a commercial for a product. Anyway, so you're going to go see the Lansing uh, Lug Nuts. I used to try to go, get you to go see Nets games with me in, uh, in New York um, when I lived in uh, New Jersey. But, uh, you know, you always had some sort of excuse, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I have to work late. I'm, I'm, I'm doing things, you know, uh, I'm doing things for my comedy career. There's a worldwide pandemic going on. I can't go to a baseball game right now. I used to be a Mets fan with all due respect. And then I turned 11 12 and i discovered <laughs> i discovered uh, my own uh things balls to play with i just discovered wow this is something that one should outgrow as an adult the, this peter pan syndrome that you seem to gravitate to i'm a kid who never grew up do you, do you trade baseball cards <laughs> It's time to put away our childish things. Are you able to lose yourself in a baseball game? I'm very jealous. Yeah, I mean, I, I go, you know, I like going with friends and I'll I'll talk with them for parts of it, but you know, but I'll 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 get I'll get into parts of it. Was Michael Brooks a sports fan? Yeah, not baseball, I think. I mean, I think he I think mostly basketball. Yeah, I think he was. That's a sign it, it's on, honestly it's a sign of a strong character, somebody who can just enjoy. There's there's justice in sports, I guess, except for baseball, right? There's no I, justice I mean, in baseball. More, I, in right? what sense? I mean that there are rules that are enforced or uh that you really live and die based on what the umpires see. Oh, I see. Yeah, to right. what, the, what the mathematical truth is. But let's talk about debating. And sure. you've been out on the Internet debating the insurrection. What is your take on the insurrection? Are you part of the dirtbag left who trivializes the insurrection? Are you somebody who says, yeah, it was bad, but a lot of bad things happened. Why are you blowing this out of proportion? Are you one of those people? Is, is, am I listening to a recording of myself? I mean, this is, this is, <laughs> this is <laughs> wow. What is it? That's, that's are amazing. you one of those people who says it's only important because it happened to Congress? Suddenly, Something happens to Congress and we have to put everything on the back burner and get to the bottom of this. But who cares? It's just Congress. Are you one of those people? Uh, no, I don't actually know that there are any of those people. But what, but what I think is uh, that it's certainly a disturbing event. Uh, Any time, you know, I mean, it's a political riot. I mean, that's just disturbing to start out with. You're, you're, you're introducing violence, you know, into uh in politics, the fact that it happened at the uh, at at this incredibly important place uh, also makes it significant. I mean, that's that's something that in some places would be more common, you know, that there'd be a riot at the um, uh, at at the seat of power, you know. But it's it's incredibly uncommon uh, in uh, in in this country. So, I mean, I I I think we should give it its due for its significance. Uh, but I also it's think it a riot, Professor. Was it a riot? Yeah, I, think, I think that's the more accurate term. Yes. Really? Uh, I, Was I, the beer hall put a riot? Uh, no, I, I think that. Um, so I, I think that the. Well, I'd say two things about the beer hall putsch. Uh, so one, I think um, 
that was in a different sense, actually an attempted, you know, putsch uh, in, uh, you know, in a way that I don't think quite applies to this. Uh, but second, I find the fixation on that in discussions of this a little odd uh, because, uh, you know, the Nazis did not in any sense come to power because of the beer hall putsch. I mean, except maybe that the beer hall putsch was such an embarrassing disaster that convinced them they needed a completely different strategy and to start over again. Um, so, so, but the idea that like, well, there's the beer hall putsch and the Nazis came to power. Therefore, if there's anything that, even if you squint at it at just the right angle, looks like the beer hall putsch, therefore, uh, it's, you know, like the alarm gets raised to 11, uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. I think that, um, I think that it's, uh, I think that it is what happened at the, at the Capitol is, I think there are like a couple of differences, but yeah, you know, between it, but I think it's in the same category uh, as, uh, as other political riots, you know, that, that have happened, you know, in the last couple for of years. For example. Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, we just, we just watched yesterday all of this, um, you know, testimony from police, our Capitol police officers about traumatic experiences. But of course you could, if you were so inclined, you could assemble, you know, you could have days of testimony of traumatic experiences from officers, uh, who were, uh, who were injured, uh, during the post George Floyd, uh, riots in the summer of 2020. There was, you know, there, there was you a, are a dirtbag leftist. What, I think there was one event in uh, in Milwaukee, if I'm getting this right. Uh, I was looking at yesterday where there were dozens of cops that were injured that were injured in some cases by mortars or other explosive devices. Uh, they uh, so I, I think that that part's pretty similar. Uh, or we could look, you know, at something like you know Chaz, where where two people were actually killed, uh, you know, by participants uh and right, Anne, let me let me let me because you're dealing with facts here so i hear this from the right that the the that the protests the george floyd protests last summer were violent and a lot of that violence well i was, certainly didn't say that i i think there well, was the BLM, I'm, I'm hearing that the blm uh certainly didn't say and wouldn't say that i think that the i think that what happened last summer in the overwhelming majority of cases were peaceful protests, but there were also riots where there was like real violence that happened, including lots of cops who were injured uh, and some people who were actually killed. I mean, that, that like, those are, okay. Those are Can you give me specifics on that? In other words, were the BLM marches violent? No. Did the BLM marches, the black lives matter marches result in police officers being shot and killed? Uh, shot and killed. I don't know about, but the, uh, but sort of, but of course, nobody, no police officers were shot and killed, uh, at the Capitol. Uh, this is a remarkable. No, no, I, I'm just curious, like you're saying, well, no, 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 but, but I mean, if we're talking about the parallel, right, I, I want to be really clear on this because for months there was a falsehood that was widely reported, which was that Brian Sicknick, a Capitol police officer died as a result of his injuries, which we now know is false. The true thing is that, uh, he had a heart condition. Now, am I sure of the fact that he died what he did? is because his heart condition was exacerbated by the stress of dealing with the riot? Absolutely. But if a police officer uh, died after a riot uh, last summer during the post-George Floyd unrest uh, in exactly the same deal, he had a heart condition and, you know, the stress of dealing with the riot, you know, pushed him over the edge, would 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 we be comfortable with, with calling that a cop who was killed uh, by the rioters? I absolutely would not. Uh, so, so, and but, but hang on. I, I just want to get something. I'm so, so, facts. Hang on for okay. one second. Okay. Hang on. There were protests and riots last summer. Yes. And you're saying that Antifa, the left, sparked some protests. To, I know that we hear yeah, that. I didn't mention Antifa. Okay. Okay. So, who was behind, say, what was going on in Portland? We we hear about federal buildings being burnt church it was a church in washington dc set upon fire the the church that donald trump had to go and hold the the bible upside down was that church set on fire by blm uh, this is the first time i've heard that it was set on fire well that's what the right is saying they're saying okay, that, well but but i don't care what the right is saying well you should no, no, i shouldn't care you shouldn't care what the right is saying here's why not they uh, the right is always going to say a bunch of nonsense where they'll say some true things when it happens to coincide with with their point in any given context they'll say some silly bullshit they'll say some 
stuff that has a core of that's true to it, but it's exaggerated. But you're making and, the same argument. And, right? but, but this, you're but this, making the right this is, argument. This is, what, this is what I hate, right? Saying, oh, if, if there's overlap between uh, true things that somebody with left-wing goals says uh, in order to make a left-wing argument and true things that might be deployed along with some bullshit to make a right-wing argument, that somehow discredits it. And I think that's a recipe for not thinking. I think okay. that's a recipe for so help me off and, I, just, I, I, and, just, and just mindlessly putting a minus wherever anybody on the right okay. puts help a plus. Me I think what the right says should be no part of this discussion. Okay, so I need you to help me out. Sure. Uh, you know more about everything than I do. I'm just- Obviously false, but okay, let's go. I just have a, a moral compass that you seem to lack. But other than we're that- all, We're already <laughs> off to the problem. <laughs> no, That's I just think uh, I have <laughs> tremendous respect for you despite <laughs> your complete and utter lack of spirituality and moral guidance. But other than that, I, 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 I would let you babysit one of my kids who I don't care about. But that's how much respect I have for you. I would trust you as one of the kids I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, okay. Is it not a false equivalency to equate? I'm not making an equivalency. Uh, okay, hang on. Is it, all right, I'm not going to say what aboutism. You are saying that the police experienced similar trauma. Yes, clearly. Last summer. That in, some, it, in some places, yes, they did. That is like the insurrection, the ins well, you won't call it an insurrection. Well, no, I, I think it's goofy to call it the insurrection. Okay, so give me an example, please, of a, a what I, you, you, you call it a riot. Give me an example of a riot in this country last summer in which the police uh, were traumatized, uh, had to go to the hospital, had heart attacks, and then were demonized by the right wing. Okay. We, we so, do have the police. The, so, the, so, 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 so you see that you're loading a bunch of stuff in the question that has nothing to do with anything I said and is it relevant to the point, right? I'm just trying to learn. So no, tell you're, me. No, you're, you're, not, me. You're, you're not. You're not. I'm, I'm sorry, but you're not. They, uh, okay. what you're, are what, you, you going to play the misogyny card here? Um, Okay, I'm, I'm, because I'm if I were a woman, officially right now, intrigued. I, I, if I were a woman, I would be triggered by your tone of voice. But I'm gonna let it slide. Okay, uh, well, answer my question. <laughs> um, so uh, certainly, I mean, if you, I mean, if you just Google, uh, you know, police officers uh, injured, you know, nationwide during protests, uh, you know, you'll find a police association uh, releasing names of more than two thousand officers. Uh, who were injured in the first week of protests uh, last uh, last summer? Uh, that um, they have any killed by the protesters? Um, as far as as far as I know, no. But that's not a disanalogy. Kyle Rittenhouse. So Kyle Rittenhouse wasn't a cop. He was a vigilante who and who gave him shelter. Him. Did the cops give him shelter? So so this is all due respect, David. I think if you want to say something, you should just say it and not pretend that it's a question. There's no question that the police side with Kyle Rittenhouse, Donald Trump and the right wing, and that during the summer, we saw next to no incidents of BLM or left wing Antifa protesters setting fire to buildings. I know there was some questionable stuff that happened in Portland. One of those people ended up getting shot mysteriously by the cops. I don't see how what happened on January 6 is in any way similar. Was that where it did set fire to? I, I don't understand why the set that, fire to is part of this. There, in, in Portland, they were, we're told that buildings were set on fire and that and then the cops went after one of them and he died mysteriously. The cops, with no due process, killed sure. I mean, if, if, somebody if, from... If you, to, if you want to argue that cops are authoritarian and repressive and racist and awful, then I agree. Uh, although I, I think it's a strange thing to, to bring up in this conversation because the reason why we're supposed to see... Uh, what, you know, from, from my perspective, 
you know, is a ugly riot and one that is different, the most important respect in which it's different. Uh, it's not the only respect which is different, but the most important respect that's different from these other riots that we're talking about is that rather than an expression of rage and frustration caused by real injustices, uh, it was incited based on lies. That's the, you know, that- The riot was- on January 6th was incited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so that I, I think that's the most important difference. Uh, but, uh, but you know, but given that uh, that the whole, you know, any violence that we're talking about, right? Like exactly one person was killed on January 6th, uh, which which was somebody who was uh, an unarmed person who was shot by the cops. We can argue about whether that was justified or not. But they have. Uh, that's the only person. That's the only person uh, who uh, who was killed. Uh, you have. Um, uh, in uh, and if we're going to talk about violence against cops, not how bad the cops are, which, as you know, I, I, I don't need any convincing of that. I agree with that, right? But if we're going to talk about violence against cops, uh, then uh, then of course there was uh, there was quite a bit of that uh, of that last summer. Again, two thousand uh, police officers uh, reported injured uh, over the course of the uh, the, the initial uh, the initial weeks. There were. Uh, 97 police cars that uh, that were burned uh, during those uh, those official weeks. There are videos of some protesters or you know rioters um, uh, pelting cops with bricks, water bottles, fireworks, and other objects, including Molotov cocktails. Uh, one agency reported dumpsters, trash cans, trees, furniture, and vehicles being set on fire uh, in many cities. And how many cops killed were killed? Zero in both cases. Zero on January six. And, and was zero. January was January January six? Was that about attacking the cops or attacking Nancy Pelosi, Mike Pence, and uh, our Constitution? So again, here's the. Is point. it about the cops? Was this a was this a riot? I, 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 I just I, I just you know you can you can argue with me or you can do the Socratic questioning thing. I, I think that the I, I think that you should just say what you want to say, but I think that as far as how well, I, no, I don't argue. I'm an inquisitor. No, but that's just a, that's just a bullshit way of arguing. No, no, I'm I'm talking. Tor- David, that, that is just a way of arguing. That's just I'm a, a, I am of, tor- of, 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 say, of saying, hey, do you not see that I am correct? Uh, and then you know, no, then, I'm author. I'm writing a book called "Give Me an Inquisition." And, and and one of the things that I've noticed is instead of debating, but the, but, 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 but the, problem, the problem is if someone who disagreed with you gave you an inquisition, uh, you know, you would, you would very quickly say it was bullshit because their questions were loaded with a bunch of. I'm just no no. With. I am. I am, first of all, your misogyny is un. If you if I were a woman, I'd be triggered by this. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, I. I really am not debating you. I'm trying. No, you to, are. You are, though. I mean, if no, you're I'm not. I'm trying to arrive at what you truly believe and what you think is true. But, and, but, 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 but I keep trying to tell you what I think is true, and you keep you keep stopping it. Okay. Ask these incredibly loaded. You think questions. it was a riot? That to, be, that to begin to respond to it, I have to say you think it's a riot. They have a yes. I think it's. I think you it's don't think it's an insurrection. No, I don't think it's an insurrection. And here's why, here's why the comparison about other riots for causes that I'm more sympathetic to is important. Uh, because I know a lot of people hear that and say, well, anything that sounds like it's talking shit about things where I, I feel one way about, or anything that sounds like it's um, you know minimizing something that I feel a completely different way about, I'm going to dislike, and that's going to be the beginning and end of their reaction to it. But the reason I think it's important is because I think that uh, 800 lunatic boomer, you know, terminally online conspiracy theorists pose a infinitesimally smaller threat to democracy than the expansion of secured the security state in the name of cracking down on domestic terrorism, which is what you know, the entirety of all the January 6th here, that's what it's about. And to see why that's dangerous, we need to think back to how many things are true of this that were also true of many riots that happened last summer. Uh, so if uh, if we have this, this infrastructure in place that domestic extremists are this big threat, that we need to have a new war on terror against domestic extremists, and then what happens last summer happens again, and people who are rightly outraged about police brutality, protests, some of the protesters riot, most of them don't, 
uh, and some of the same kind of violence that happens last summer again happens, uh, you've just handed uh, the, uh, the police and the security state a golden opportunity to crack down much harder than happened last time. May I respond to your libertarian hogwash? Uh, you, 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 you may respond to my leftist common sense, yes. Okay. World War II. Yes, this is the same argument that you're making. Okay. I look, I look forward to hearing what my argument is, yes. And, and quite frankly, I've been very, I've been trying to keep, keep it even. I'm, you know, I'm keeping score and, you know, I, I'm rooting for you. I, I'd like you to come on this show once and lose and win an inquisition. Inquisition. You've never won an Inquisition. Yeah, I, well, I think the nature of Inquisitions is that the person being inquisited can't win. But okay. Well, convert. <laughs> Just convert. <laughs> Prove to me that you've converted and you've won. We've all won. That's all I want you to do is convert. World War II. Yeah, okay. Always promising, by the way, that when something right. has been compared to World War II, that, 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 that is always a, an excellent beginning, but go for it. Okay. World War II. Hey, we just got attacked on Pearl Harbor Day. Ironically, it's called Pearl Harbor Day. What, what are the odds that we would be attacked on Pearl Harbor Day? I want, I'm outraged. It was a horrible thing that happened. Mm. It was horrible. But for us to build up the military and take on Tojo and Emperor Hirohito, I, the overcorrection of a building up a military industrial complex, it's not worth fighting Hitler and Japan at the expense of our civil liberties when we go to war and, and all the money that's going to be spent on bombs instead of butter. So that's the argument you're making. Wow. Well. Uh, man, I'm basically I'm, what I'm saying is I, I, I must you're be, okay with must, Hitler. You're okay with Hitler. I must be. I must be pretty dumb if I'm making that argument. And, and you're also, saying that also, also, you, also, also, also pretty terrible. You should not trust me to babysit those kids. I don't care about the kids. I, I really don't. Uh, no, seriously, you're you're no, saying, no, I, I, you're so, saying so, the you you don't trust the government to fix what happened on January 6th. You think they're going to make it, you, you, you think the, the cure is going to be worse than the disease. That's what I you're do, I, I do think the cure is going to be worse than the disease. And I would agree with you that uh, winning World War II uh, is a case where the cure, the cure was not worse than the disease. But if we could introduce a second analogy, uh, certainly one of the formative political experiences of my life, you know, when I was in college, uh, was the September 11th terrorist attacks and the response to that. Uh, and in, you know, I would say that, um, that, uh, uh, you know, 800, uh, some of them armed, you know, uh, you know, in ways that some rioters last summer were armed, but, you know, mostly unarmed, uh, you know, rioters at the Capitol are a whole lot more like Al Qaeda attacking on September 11th than they are like the Japanese empire taking over vast stretches of the planet. Uh, and and you know and uh, and carrying out widespread massacres and imposing you know totalitarian governments, allying with Hitler, you know wiping out European Jewry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And and even though right, like so Al Al Qaeda attacking on 9/11, uh, where I, I think we all agree it would not be libertarian hogwash to say that the cure was 10,000 times worse than the disease. Uh, that the that the violation that the expansion of the security state after 9/11, the rollbacks of civil liberties, uh, the wars that are still going on decades later, that all of that was just unfathomably worse than the disease. But notice, if we compare September 11th to January 6, uh, one difference is that the rioters killed zero people on January 6, whereas Al Qaeda killed 3,000 and changed people uh, on uh, on September uh, September 11th. Uh, you know, in, including, you know, knocking a hole in, in, in the Pentagon, and, you know, and, and trying apparently to uh, get the White House. Uh, you know, so if, if, we're, if we're talking about national security threats, that's, that ranks way higher. And if we're talking about the ideology, because I think that's an important thing to talk about, because, you know, you were talking about, oh, all the things that they were against earlier. And oftentimes, if you say this is a disgusting riot and anybody who did anything violent, you know, should certainly be prosecuted, but 
uh, that's all it was. And we shouldn't exaggerate something beyond it that could be used to justify expanding the security state in ways that 100% for sure will be used against the left. Uh, that they, uh, that, uh, that look at what Al Qaeda stood for, right? I mean, the same way that I have no, you know, I think it's ridiculous, you know, that, that I thought it was ridiculous after 9 11 that people like me who were against the wars, against the civil liberties war battle rollbacks were constantly accused of sympathizing with Al Qaeda or, you know, not understanding, you know, how, how bad they were. I think it's ridiculous that people like me are accused of somehow sympathizing with the January 6 rioters or not understanding how bad they well, are. Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda is a fascist organization. That Nobody's works. accusing you. Nobody's accusing you of sympathizing with January 6. What I'm accusing you of is trivializing what happened. Not well, that's, but that's, but that's exactly what people were accused of. Uh, Anti-war people were accused of after 9/11 uh, is is trying to say that 9-11 wasn't a big deal. I think it's. I think 9-11 is a big deal, we but I don't think that Al-Qaeda represented some, some sort of profound threat to Western civilization. Similarly, I think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think a political riot is always a big deal. I think that having it be egged on by the sitting president is a much bigger deal. But I also think that realistically, uh, there was, you know, we're talking about an event that, you know, we're using this term, the insurrection, even though... Right literally not one single person fired a gun except for a cop uh that they that's that's not like that's not how the word insurrection has ever been used before uh that that's and saying that that doesn't really fit that's not trivializing okay so let, like, let me respond to this so this is a a you're doing linguistic gymnastics you're playing tricks with semantics you're, i play tricks with semantics when i say that nobody firing a shot makes it yes. farcical to call it an insurrection. Did anybody fire a shot in Gore v. Bush? Was you that can, an insurrection? That, that was a coup. I've that never was, heard anybody call it that, but I'm. But I'm it, I, what, it, what, there, there are. Let, let me let me respond to uh, to what you just said. There are many iterations of a coup, and there are many iterations of an insurrection. Just because nobody was shot on January 6 doesn't mean it wasn't an insurrection. It was part of a larger whole. And let me explain to you what I happen to think January 6 was. Yeah. It was a flexing of right wing authoritarian muscle. It was Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani and the white nationalists, the fascists, in our government, in and out of our government, who are saying, look what we can do. Look what I can do. I can stand on the ellipse and send these people to storm the Capitol. If I can get these people to storm the Capitol and create enough confusion to justify there are enough people that we have a whole propaganda arm, Fox News and AM talk radio, who are saying it wasn't an insurrection. It was at worst a crime. And you got to understand their frustration. If you can get January 6th, you can get those people to do what they did on January 6th and get away with it. Only have about, if we're lucky, 500 convictions. What else? Wait, wait, wait a second. 500 convictions out of 800 people? That's a, That's like, a, that That seems pretty draconian to me. Do you think 500 people did anything violent on the 6th? I, I, think, I think 500 people who are going to be sentenced for like, what, trespassing? Six months in jail? So hang on for one second. The threat... Convictions so far have been for more than that, but okay. More than a year? Well, more than six months. Do you think? Do you consider a year in jail to be trivial? If there, uh, if uh, if after I the Wisconsin, those people, I think if, those, if, after, if after the Wisconsin State Capitol occupation, and no, I am not saying those are morally and politically equivalent. I know somebody watching or listening uh, will be enough of an idiot to think I am, but they have. But if after the the Washington the uh, the uh, Wisconsin State Capitol occupation in 2011, if 500 people, most of whom had done nothing but illegally breach the state capitol, went to prison for a year. You would consider that to be a slap on the wrist? I, I would. The the people who stormed the Wisconsin State Capitol weren't carrying guns. Weren't oh, the the vast majority of those eight hundred people who stormed the uh, national capitol weren't carrying guns. How do you know that? 
charging documents. How, how do you do, do you know what how many of them were carried? Were there metal detectors that they went through think, the airspray? Do you know? Because, because when prosecutors have to actually put their cards on the table, uh, from what we can tell from the charging documents, almost none of those people were carrying guns. How do you know that? Are you going to trust the prosecutors? I think that I think that being more Catholic than the Pope on the prosecutor question is pretty silly. Uh, it's in their interest to, to try to nail as many of these people. How are you going to prove? For, for, for as many things as they possibly can. Right. The oath they, that's how prosecutors get promoted. Uh, okay. that's, that's how they build their careers. The oath, the oath Keepers and, and, and the Proud Boys had baseball bats and bear spray and American flag poles. What, 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 percentage, what percentage of the 800 people do you, uh, do you think were, uh, were Oath Keepers uh, with, uh, with bear spray and clubs? There were Oath Keepers and Proud Boys with walkie talkies. Yes, what percentage, what percentage of the crowd do you think they were? Uh, what percentage of the men who stormed D-Day organized it? Uh, what percentage? What percentage? Of, what percentage? What percentage, what percentage of men? What percentage of the men who, who stormed D Day were carrying weapons and firing them? One hundred percent. And they were following orders and being told what to do and getting caught up. They, the, the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, organized this before January six. Even Mo Brooks said today, came out today, that when he was telling people to storm the Capitol. Today's the day we, we take names. He was wearing a bulletproof vest. He said he slept, Mo Brooks said he slept in the Capitol that day and he wore a bulletproof vest when he spoke on the ellipse because he knew there was gonna be trouble. They knew this thing was organized. You can't, you, you, you don't believe that it was spontaneous, do you? I think that there were. I think that the uh, the very small minority who were uh, who were right wing LARPer insurrectionary LARPers and militia people. I think that that was very organized. I think that most people, you know, I think that they're LARPing. They're 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 they're, they're, yes, yes, they're, 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 they're they're LARPing. If you don't, if zero people fire a gun uh, at any point in the proceedings, then yes, you are not serious. About maybe it. maybe they were doing something. Maybe it was a controlled burn. What can you guarantee me? Can you guarantee me? Well, I no, I mean, I'm going to stop there because happens. obviously I can't guarantee anything in one direction, and you can't guarantee. Yes, I can. Direction. I can guarantee you that it is against the law to storm the Capitol. To to yes, and the Wisconsin occupiers were breaking exactly did the they, same did they, law. Did they put bear spray? Did they try to get Okay, but that's not that's not the same question. They uh, you know, the the bear the bear, the bear spray question, you're back to talking about the violence. Yes, you're back to talking about violence no that, was, that, that was committed by a very small number of people. There are very small number of people who committed violent things. And the reason that I care about the distinction between a very small number of people who do violent things, whether, you know, even a very small number of people who do plan premeditated violent things is because anybody who has a memory uh, longer than a moth's uh, should be able to think of lots of examples of left-wing protests. I have never seen in my lifetime, hang on for one second, I have never seen a scrum of about 200, and 200 people, all white, by the way, storming the Capitol, all pushing on an officer's head that oh, he almost got decapitated. I've never seen, I've never seen anything like the insurrection. So if you can give me an example of what, and I do see- 200 people pushing on something with one officer trying to stop them. Uh, you, you think that nothing like that has ever happened over the course of, you know, the anti-war movement over the give course- Give me an example. Give me an example. Of, of two I remember years. Abby Hoffman trying to levitate the Capitol. I remember the weather underground blowing up buildings, but giving warnings beforehand. But give me an example of a group of right wingers who, who stormed a federal building with the intent to overthrow an election. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so if you want an example from the era that you just talked about of uh, left wingers storming a building, then the Black Panthers, uh, who, by the way, actually were all armed, uh, storming the uh, California state capitol. Which was legal. 
in uh, in Sacramento. Oh, that was legal. They were the, the Black Panthers gave us gun control. Governor Reagan. All they did was innocently walk around the state capitol with guns because it was legal. They would shut the black. The genius of the Black Panthers was to follow cops as they pulled over African-Americans in Oakland and they would show up with guns because it was legal at the time. And that's why Governor Reagan was for gun control. They didn't storm the capitol. The Black Panthers didn't. They pe- OK, 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 OK. They marched into the Capitol brandishing weapons, and you, Which can, was watch, and, and you can watch footage of state legislatures jumping under their uh, their desks in terror uh, because uh, because that happened. And you're right; they were they arrested. Were the black were they arrested? They tightened up. I'm going to finish the point. They tightened up laws uh, in uh, in response to it. But that itself is exactly the point that we shouldn't be. That like rather than focusing on do we love or hate you know the uh, the individual people or do we want to like rhetorically own right wingers for saying whatever bullshit they're saying about it we should keep our eye on the vastly larger prize. Okay, did the which black is, do we want things to be taken up did in they, response? Okay, hang on for one second. Did the Black Panthers gouge anybody's eyes out? They didn't get arrested. They did not get arrested for. Uh, for doing well, I mean, it, 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 there, there are several examples of individual Black Panthers uh, who were actually arrested uh, on the accusation. Is it an overcorrection for on, 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 on the accusation of killing uh, cops that that happened several times? Story. They have a, those were but, false accusations, but sometimes I mean they have a. I, I don't. I don't think like look. Like, look, I mean, you know, which who, who do I sympathize with in that situation? The Black Panthers, the cops. I'm 100 percent the Black Panthers, but you know, but uh, are you but, for gun control laws? But that's are you for uh, gun control laws? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that's a complicated question that they have. So, so was it an overcorrection for Governor Reagan to pass, introduce and pass gun control laws in response to the Black Panthers following cops with guns and going into the state capitol with guns? Was that an overcorrection? Was that okay? okay much, 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 much easier question than what I think the gun control laws should be now. Uh, which is which is what you know it's it's a big complicated messy question that I'm not going to try to do 30 seconds of in the middle of this but I think that the uh, but uh, was that an overcorrection you talked about yeah absolutely you you think that Governor Reagan passing gun control laws in response to the Black Panthers was an overcorrection an example of big government taking away our rights I think that uh, I think the Governor Reagan passing gun control laws as part of an effort to crack down on the Black Panthers for policing the police uh, to try to do something about police violence in Oakland and other cities was a very bad thing. Yes. I okay. That's, that's 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 any which anybody who was like to the left of Hubert Humphrey would have told you at the time it was a very bad thing. This is hardly a libertarian position. But, but gun control is a good thing. Again, I think that's a complicated question. I'm not going to give it a yes or no answer for the for the purpose of of of, of striking a certain rhetor- you know, rhetorical you know like scrimmage line in this particular debate. Okay, so give me an example of something similar to January 6th. So far, you've brought up uh, Wisconsin, which is well, 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 well. Again, the point of these is, is that, give me an example. But but, the, the, but 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 what you're asking for has nothing to do with the purpose for which I'm bringing these up. I've never I'm, seen anything like I'm, I'm, no, no, no. But you, but you said, but you, but, but, but you said, you said equivalent. I'm not saying any of these things were equivalent. That has nothing to do with the point. Obviously, I think there are vast moral and political differences uh, be, uh, between uh, between these cases. The reason I'm bringing them up is that I don't want the idea that if you have a protest where people storm a government building, uh, which has certainly happened in many, many protests for causes I support over the years, and yes, lots of other differences between those protests. I'm not saying that they're morally equivalent. The point is, if you want to set the precedent that even if somebody does does nothing personally violent, just the mere fact that they stormed a Capitol uh, building or other government building during a protest, that the book should be thrown at them for doing that. They should get a year in prison uh, for, uh, for, for doing that. That is a precedent that I think is incredibly dangerous. 
and uh, could be used for incredibly draconian crackdowns against the left. That's the purpose for which I'm bringing up Wisconsin. Not to say, not to say that it's somehow equivalent, okay. but if you want to know what are le- what what are left wing protests, riots, events uh, where things things happen that were more violent than what happened on January 6th, we don't have to go back very far. Chaz. Two people were killed by our members of Chaz. Zero people were killed by anybody on January 6th. Chaz? The Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone in Seattle last summer. And who was behind that? I mean, there's uh, people who were protesting uh, police, police brutality and murder. And who uh, died? And who what? Who died? Uh, I think a, uh, a couple of young black kids uh, because because uh, they were driving by or past like a barricade set up by uh, by Chaz security, if I'm remembering the story. correctly. And who killed them? Uh, members of, you know, like people who are like Chaz, like like like, you know, informal, you know, armed security, you know, people who are who are political participants in that project. Right. And was this a government? So the two people who died, they weren't cops. No, which I actually think makes it a lot worse, don't you? Well, uh, it wasn't an attack on our. Okay, but the the, the point, but you keep shifting the goalposts. No, no, you, I'm asking. You know, you're, you're, you know, every time I say in this respect, here's a thing that was similar. And the reason I'm saying that is because I worry about precedents being set and crackdowns on this that could be applied to other similar things in the future. Uh, that we'd feel differently about. And I say, in this respect, they were similar. And you keep saying, okay, but what about this other respect? They were different. I'm not making a claim of overall equivalency. I'm asking you for a simple answer, okay? Give me, I happen to believe that it wasn't a riot. I believe it was an act of terrorism and a threat of insurrection. Now, oh my God, let's not use that word. That's the, no, uh, the, the, the no. I mean, first, 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 first of all, terrorism is a word that I think should basically never pass the lips of uh, anybody who's who's a leftist. Uh, who's, the definition of, of against that. It's a meaningless term. It's a term whose only function. It's not like there's some objective definition of terrorism. The only function of the word terrorist is to justify expansions of the national security state. I will it's, 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 it's a moral hall pass for suspending normal legal requirements. That's all terrorist means. Okay. And, and, so, and so eventually all words lose their meaning. Because- no, this one never had one. It does. The definition. No. Yes. I mean, I re- the fact that you can find some dictionary and it has a definition and you can say, sure, this matches that definition. Also, everything that the U.S. military does around the world 100 times a day technically matches the dictionary definition. But if you want to talk about how people no, use, use no. the word in real life and have always used the word in real life, the dictionary definition is going to be irrelevant. Well, but, you know, there I happen to believe that we have building blocks to uh, language and upon those building blocks of language, we have reason. So the, the definition of terrorism is state, a stateless, a, a telemarketer. Uh, it, is a, uh, it is a stateless group. Well, that's 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 pretty convenient that you, you can just build that right in. Like so the, all the things that the U.S. military constantly does that would otherwise fit the definition are excluded a priori because it's not a stateless group. No, no, the word terror and terrified are inextricably linked. The Ku Klux Klan was a terrorist organization because they would commit acts of violence the same way Al Qaeda would commit acts of violence as examples of what we're capable of doing. A terrorist organization is a stateless group that kills a, a few people to show what they're capable of doing and to get a group of people, especially a nation, absolutely terrified. So that is the definition of terrorist activity well if, well, if, if that if that's the definition january 6 doesn't fit uh because nobody was killed by the people you call them terrorists in this case Thank you. I, I would also point out that earlier you said it was about flexing muscles and i would say if so the muscles were fucking pathetic uh because they uh because 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 we look at what happened it was a profound demonstration of the weakness of trump's position that he had 
Uh, he just spent months uh, having, having Republican appointed and even Trump appointed judges all the way up to the Supreme Court, laugh his lawsuits out of court, do everything short of uh, writing lol, fuck no, and crayon on a little piece of paper and pushing it back uh, when uh, when they entered lawsuits. Uh, this, so, uh, so, so the judges he appointed wouldn't do what he wanted. Uh, the military, I'm sure he would have loved it if they'd intervened for him, but they had less, no interest whatsoever in doing that his own vice president wasn't willing to do what he wanted which is part of what had you know the mob so riled up in the uh in in the first place uh and so the last resort was this spasm of impotent rage uh by uh by 800 pathetic boomer conspiracy theorists uh who who he was able who he was able to egg on who had no plan there was no realistic scenario. You could, true. you could rewind that and replay it 10,000 times in 10,000 versions of the universe. And there's no version where they would have somehow uh, overturned the result of the election. There was no possibility of that. There, there was, it, was a, it was an expression of rage because of this lie that they've been told about Trump winning the election. But there was, but there, but there, but there, there was, there was never any sort of realistic path from point A to uh, to point B. I mean, if you're just going to say they wished that their expression of infinite rage would somehow do it, then you know, then you can say that uh, that the the weathermen, you know, that, that that was like a serious attempt to overthrow the United States government. It's nonsense. Nonsense. What would have happened? If- Love this argument. What, huh? Okay, well, let's see if you're going to say what I've, I've heard so many times before. Let's hear it. What would have happened? Three six proved that Donald Trump, Mo Brooks, Rudy Giuliani, Michael Flynn have an army of thugs who will pretty much do what they ask, that the Oath Keepers and, and the Proud Boys, what did he say during the debate? Stand, you know, get ready, stand back, stand down, but be ready. If you can get these people to storm the Capitol, what else can you get your people to do? It doesn't matter because really? those groups that you just mentioned, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, we're talking about, what, a few hundred people in the entire country? They have a, uh, like, certainly a small minority of that crowd that, you know, that you could get hundred of them, a couple hundred of them to storm the Capitol along with several hundred, you know, hangers on chanting slogans and taking selfies. I think that what that proves is that your army is pathetic. It's nothing. They have a, we're talking about, if you want to talk about an insurrection and, to, and, take, wo- and, 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 to, and, and take words seriously, what you mean is an attempt to overthrow the best armed, most powerful state that has ever existed in any country in the history of the human race. And you're saying that a total force in the entire country of a few hundred people, that's that's, that's an army that counts for anything against the most powerful military that's ever existed? The military, you have people in the military, in the police, in the Capitol who were sympathetic to the people who stormed the Capitol. It's not just 20 agitators. You had people who were for that. You had an entire propaganda arm, Fox News, which was trivializing those events, who said, we have to understand where their rage is coming from. You have, I would say, about what? You have an entire political party in Washington, D.C., who sang it was nothing. They were tourists. They didn't do any damage. So, they, notice, so, so oh. notice that the, the how far you've dragged the goalposts across the field here, because first you were talking about, oh, he has this army. And then I pointed out, the, I, I, I pointed out that the army is almost unimaginably pathetic. No, uh, a, 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 a few hundred people. And now you're shifting from talking about the army to talking about people trivializing it. But you don't overthrow governments through trivialization. I, what, what are you talking about? He, I'm saying that it wasn't just the Oath Keepers and it wasn't just the, the Proud Boys. It was the Republican Party. And look at look at how they're 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 stonewalling this investigation. Yes, because 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 congressional investigations in general 
I think there are two or three exceptions, maybe the church committee, the, uh, the, the, the committee that drafted the articles of impeachment against Nixon, maybe one or two others. Congressional investigations are about rhetorical point scoring and very little else, whether it's Benghazi or whether, or, 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 or whether it's this. So, of course, if the people who are point scoring are trying to make you look bad, then you're going to stonewall it, whichever shoe, whichever, uh, whichever foot the shoe happens to be on at any given time. What? I mean, that's that's what the, all of those memes of Hillary Clinton looking bored, you know, at the uh, Benghazi hearings were, uh, were, 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 were about that. But I would submit what that there, there is a night and day oh. difference between being part of an army that is ready to take up arms for the purpose of trying to overthrow the most powerful government that's ever existed and stonewalling or trivializing or any of these things. I think that the, I don't think the one question is relevant to the other. It's very much because you don't see, you don't see the threat. I didn't uh, storm the beaches of Normandy. I, you know, if I were, I, I, let's say I was whatever, but I was rooting, I was giving sucker. I was have, I would have victory gardens. I would support, I would support D-Day. You have about what seven? Well, if 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 if, we, if if D Day was stormed by by eight hundred mostly unarmed people, uh, then it wouldn't matter if a billion people. It wouldn't matter if ten billion people had victory Mario gardens what and were president? hypothetically prepared to cheer it on. Well, uh, you know, you you need you need to have an actual army. There's no army in this. How many country. people did it take to kill Kennedy? You don't need uh, a hundred. It's you. How many people of the 75? Wait, 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 why, 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 is, why is killing Kennedy relevant here? Because you don't need 500,000 people. Yes, if, if, the, if the goal is to assassinate one person, you don't. If the goal is to overthrow a government, you absolutely do. And of the 75 million people who voted for Trump, how many of them sympathized with the people who stormed the Capitol? What percentage? What percentage of them were rooting for that? I have no idea. Neither do you. I don't care. Really? I would, because that's how governments get overthrown. When there's one party that doesn't resort to election, when they realize that they can't win at the ballot box and they can't win in the courtrooms, they storm the building. What percentage? But, but, but you're going from a party storming it to you're, you're switching back and forth from 800 people, which wouldn't be a big demonstration in Lansing, Michigan. They are part of a larger movement that doesn't recognize Joe Biden as our president, that thinks the election was stolen. You have at least 50 million voters in this country. Well, there, 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 there have certainly been some elections in, uh, in the past that I thought were stolen, and so did you. Yeah, but uh, I didn't they, arm the Capitol. Yes, but neither did they. You're talking about... You know, you're talking about 800 people who did. Do you think? Do you, do you do you think that in 2000, if there were 800 people who could have, who were in some position to that, you couldn't have found 800 people in the entire country who were willing to do that? The Republican Party, the Brooks Brothers riot, when they were counting the chads. Yes, the Republican Party had a mini Brooks Brother riot when they were counting chads, and that they got away with. Nobody was arrested. And I'm telling you, your failure to see that there is an undercurrent in this country that supports the people who storm the Capitol, it's not just them. It is millions and millions of armed racists, separatists, who are rooting. Is it, wait, 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 wait a second. You think there are millions of armed separatists in the United States? I just want to make sure I heard that right. What, uh, there are millions of people who are armed, who are tend to be, tend to be racists. Okay, 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 but that's a pretty different claim. Do you think there are millions of armed separatists as opposed to like hundreds? Do you think there are millions you of armed separatists? Okay, I, I will, for the sake of this argument, I will retract that because that's not germane to the conversation. Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, it is if we're talking like about scales of President threat. Trump, was President Trump happy or ups, uh, or upset by those people? Well, I, I, I already, I already said he egged, he, uh, he egged them on. That was one of the first things I said in the beginning of the conversation. We have like, you know, but, but you can, but this is, this is, you know, this, this reminds me of nothing so much. 
as, as being told about how many, you know, Muslims in different countries were happy, you know, about 9-11, you know, happening because, you know, because they resented the United States. And I would say that the thoughts in people's heads do not by themselves add up to a threat of overthrowing the government. And if we're going to be realistic about threats, we don't want to, we don't want to downplay them. We also don't want to upplay them. Then I would say by any objective metric, just like Bush and Cheney and Ashcroft and Rumsfeld were a vastly greater threat to Americans after 9-11 than Al-Qaeda was, even though Al-Qaeda did kill 3,000 people, I'd say that an expansion of the security state, setting precedents, you know, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for crackdowns, an expanded focus on domestic extremists, which is absolutely the agenda of those hearings right now, is a much greater threat to democracy, to the left, than a they relative handful of, 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 of lunatics, uh, you know, overthrowing the capital. Results, overthrowing the results of a presidential election but there was never any chance of them overthrowing those. Uh, that was never in the cards. It, that's, it was pathetic. It was a, it was a last ditch spasm of rage at their inability to overthrow them. There was never the tidiest chance that they could have somehow overthrown them. Really? What would have happened? Really? Yes, of course, really. Actually, I want to know. Do you think what I just said is false? Do you think there was a chance that the uh, Capitol rioters could have somehow overturned the result of the election. Oh, yes. How? Uh, I don't, I, okay. Without interrupting me, this is what I think. Okay, good. Uh, then, then you don't interrupt me next time and we're, we're, we're even. I think if Nancy Pelosi had been sitting in her office and those people got in and saw her, the ones who, you know, you've seen the tapes. We're coming from you, Nancy. We're gonna hang you. People are gonna die today. I like to believe that had Nancy Pelosi seen those people, I like to believe that even though they gouged officers' eyes and broke windows and used American flagpoles to, to and through, uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos or not. I, I would watch them. I'd like to believe that had Nancy Pelosi been in front of them, she would have diffused the situation. They would have went, oh, my God, this is insane. I like to believe that. But there are always people who are true believers who would have wanted to kill her. I happen to believe that if they had gotten their hands on Mike Pence, they would have said, if you don't overturn this election, we're going to you know what, to Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence. There, but for Eugene Goodman, Officer Goodman, who diverted the, the, the rioters, the insurrectionists, there, but for Eugene Goodman, Officer Eugene Goodman, they could have gotten their hands on a lawmaker and we would have had a hostage situation. Here's what we know for sure. If we know that there would have been a hostage situation. So what do you think to get Nancy Pelosi out of the clutches of these monsters or Mike Pence out of the clutches of these monsters? You don't think we would have postponed the certification to save the lives of Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi? What I think would have happened? Eventually, eventually one would hope that we would have freed Pelosi and Mike Pence and we would have certified that election. But the, the precedent, and it already is over, the precedent of a peaceful transition is gone. That it's, a, it's no longer a given. So I, I just want to say two things about that. One, even in this fantasy scenario that's entirely hypothetical that you came up with, uh, the, the, the result the result was not that the election was overturned. You know, by the time you were done with your scenario, you admitted that, yeah, that would not have actually meant the election was overturned. It would have 
delayed it by a day or two, it would not have overturned the election. Oh, oh I, I don't know. That's, well, well, that's what you just said. I don't know. Right? Like, 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 I, I, I think that I think that just I can't. I, I, mean, I think you were trying to game it out in an honest way, and and at the end of doing so, you admitted that even in that scenario, the election would not have overturned. The other thing I want to say at is, what cost? At what? So, 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 right. so you, you, you just, you just got upset at me for interrupting you. Uh, the, uh, the other thing I was going to say is that one thing that I am 100% sure about in that situation, that, you know, that somebody was taken hostage, that a, uh, a lawmaker was taken hostage, something I'm 100% sure about is by the end of that, every single one of those people would have been massacred by Capitol Police. Including? Uh, they would be dead. Including whoever was taken hostage. Whether, whether that would have happened, you know, whether they would have managed to extricate them or not, I'm saying that in any scenario where there was vi- actual violence against a member of Congress, all of those people would be dead. And I think you know that. So what? I think, well, so what is that, they, uh, is that we're talking about whether there was ever any possibility that this is something that could have overturned the result of the election, that this could have been like a successful coup. And I'm saying... Not only is that not the case, I think we know, I think we should all admit, if you're being honest about it, that the uh, that not only would it not have resulted in, you know, Donald Trump still being president, you know, come January 20th, uh, the most immediate result uh, would have uh, would have been that all of those people, all of those people would have died. Uh, the uh, the all of those rioters would have died. Uh, the uh, the election uh, still would have still st- st- still would have been certified, and we'd probably be uh, be facing an unfathomably more dramatic b- uh, crackdown on domestic extremists now if that had happened. When Horse Wessel died, he was completely forgotten, and uh, the the woman uh, Ashley, what's the woman who was shot? Ashley Babbitt. Ashley Babbitt. They forgot about her. They killed her. And she's not, nobody's martyring her. It's it's over, right? This whole thing is, the insurrection or the riot, as you call it, is over. Say what you're saying. Don't disguise it as smarmy questions. Okay. It's, do you believe, I don't believe it's over. Do I, do I, do I believe that the, uh, that, uh, that it's something that people are going to stop? That people are going to stop what? I don't believe the right wing, the violent right wing who, who believe in Trump and whoever is behind Trump. I don't believe it ended on January 6th. And I don't no, of course not. Of course not. And I think they, I've, never, they, I've never hinted at thinking otherwise, but they have a, uh, but there's, there's a difference between saying that right wing violence existed before January 6th. It will exist after January 6th. It's now part of the mythology, you know, of, of, of some right wingers in the same way that it now seems to be part you know, now seems to be like central to the cosmology of MSNBC liberals. You know, they talk about capital T, capital I, the insurrection uh, as 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 if uh, this was, you know, the most important event that's happened in, you know, centuries uh, to uh, to hear them, uh, to hear them talk about it. Uh, this uh, this event where where zero people were killed uh, by uh, by 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 rioters. But yes, absolutely. Of course, all these things are going to uh, are going to continue uh, going to continue to exist. Of course, Trumpism would have continued to exist with or without January six. Of course, right wing political violence will continue to exist with or without January six. But just but that's like saying, uh, did Al Qaeda continue to exist after nine eleven? Yeah, it did. Right? You know, were there going to be other terrorist attacks as there have been over the years? Yeah, there were. But was Al Qaeda uh, the profound threat? that it was inflated into, or was the cure worse than the disease? And that's the same question in this case. That's a separate track. Let me ask you last question. I'm gonna give you this argument because you're my guest, okay? You won the argument because I need, I want you to come back. My last question on give them an inquisition. Sure, let's, let's do it. How upset were you about January 6th. Did you believe now here, here here this is what I think is going on on the on the dirtbag left. Which for the for the record, I have no idea what that expression means, but go on. What it was by modeling the behavior. You never Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> there are people, there there is an impulse in everyone who looked at January 6th and said you know what? I don't approve of. I'm talking about people on our side. 
I don't approve of violence. I don't like the people who stormed the Capitol, but I also don't like Pelosi. I don't like Schumer. It's good that they should feel the way we feel. Let them know what it's like to have the sheriff kicking down our door to evict us. They don't answer our calls. They don't read our emails. This is what happens and a pox on everybody. If I know that that's a bad feeling to have, but I know there's a tiny part of me that felt that because I don't like Pelosi. I don't like the Democrats. Okay. But I'm also mature enough to know that the Democrats are not nearly as dangerous to me as these Republicans are. Now, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then you get the last word. Mm. Ask a member, and I'm going to play the uh, Jew card mm. and make you squirm. This is because this is, you got me desperate, so I'm playing the Jew card. This is what you've done to me. Okay. Ask anybody who's a member of a protected class what they see on January 6th. Ask a member of the LGBTQ community, ask a woman, ask a Muslim. If Donald Trump, he sent a signal that day. I can send these idiots, these violent thugs to destroy the Capitol, which they did. They, they did destroy the Capitol that day. I can send them to your mosque, your temple, to the, uh, the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. I can send my people extrajudicially the way Duterte does in the Philippines. I don't need the police. I got those thugs. That was the message Trump sent that day. And if you think they're going away, watch the midterms. Watch the threats. You think that guy, that, that the, the, the state's attorney generals, uh, the state, the state. Just want to note that I've already said, I don't think any of the things that you're saying you think, but go on. Okay. The secretaries of states who have to certify the, the elections and uh, come midterms, you don't think they're thinking about their homes being stormed and hostage situations? You don't think... You don't think that chills the democratic process? You think that just happened spontaneously January 6th? This is all part of a larger movement, an authoritarian fascist movement. It isn't going to end unless we lock these people up. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the all of this stuff, do you think is irrelevant? Because because if you just any roll back the tape a couple of minutes, you'll find me say I don't think. Um, I think most of the things that you you started with, do you think? But um, but as to uh, how did I feel on January six, horrified. I mean, I I, I think that um, that's that's certainly my reaction. Uh, I'd say that you can watch me uh, react to it in real time on YouTube, but YouTube actually took that down as part of the uh, explosion of tech censorship following January 6th, which is one small taste of why it is so profoundly dangerous for us to get obsessed with, uh, with the sort of red versus blue uh, you know, games about this and take our eyes off the ball of increased state repression, which is objectively the most important issue. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I was horrified by it. I mean, somewhat less as time went on and a lot of the things that we were told on the day and in the subsequent days turned out not to be true uh that you know that the coroner you know debunked claim after claim after claim that was initially made that you know the charging documents didn't include a lot of the things that we were originally told happened etc but yes yeah, still uh i think I, I still think that you know even if it was overstated uh that you know that uh that i i thought because most of the initial reports were talking as if everybody was armed uh the sicknick thing turned out not to be true the zip tie thing turned out to be not to be true etc so all of that definitely, you know, decreases it. But yes, I mean, I was I was horrified by it initially. And even if, like, in some respects, it turns out certain aspects were overhyped, I'm still disgusted by it. Uh, looking back on it, I I don't recognize my psychology in that description of the uh, the dirtbag left, whatever that is. Uh, the um, do uh, you know? Do I think? Um, 
do I think uh, that that Trumpism, you know, is is, is going away? Uh, of course not. Uh, you know, they, as as I said, uh, I, if anything, I think that I think that all of this is keeping it alive. I think that the I think that the twenty four seven obsession of liberals with Donald Trump, uh, you know, several months after he lost left office, and sort of inflating uh, one six into this historical event, you know, that Joe Biden said it was the most important attack on our democracy in 150 years, which should be news to, you know, to speaking of Jews, you know, Cheney and Goodwin's, uh, you know, uh, you know, families, you know, and, and all the other civil rights workers who were actually murdered uh, registering people to vote. Uh, you know, do I think that right wing authoritarianism is a problem? Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that the that the part of it that you should be worried about so much is uh, QAnon lunatic storming buildings. I think the part of it you should be worried about uh, is, uh, you know, is, is just legislatures, uh, including legislators, including lots of never Trump people, you know, passing laws to, uh, to, to, make, it, uh, to make it harder, harder to vote. Uh, as to asking members of oppressed groups, uh, I would just gently suggest that oppressed groups are not a hive mind, uh, that uh, are not hive minds, that, uh, that you have, uh, that you have members of every single group that you just rattled off who think what I think about this. You have members of every single group who don't agree with either of us, who maybe agree with some of the dumb Republican points about this. Uh, that 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 kind of identitarian deference, you know, listen to what Group X says, only works if you think, which is, by the way, a really racist thing to think, that Group X is, uh, is, is a hive mind. Uh, I think that we just have to figure it out for ourselves that we can't rely on what does everybody in some oppressed group think because members of oppressed groups like everybody else are all over the place as to where when your synagogue mosque or church is being shot up you have a hive mind we have to wrap it up well they the well for uh so i think that um you know about that uh about that perhaps i think the idea that 800 uh 800 people uh you know uh storming into a capitol building some of them made militia people and doing violent things, uh, you know, most of them wandering around chanting slogans uh, that that uh, and then the response to that being that immediately uh, Trump himself turned on them uh, they, uh, and abandoned them that they uh, that they couldn't, you know, they tried to go to the airport to go home, that they've all had the book thrown at them afterwards, that this somehow made it more likely that there are going to be church or synagogue shootings. Uh, I do not see it. And uh, and I think that you are going to find members of every single one of those groups who agree with me doesn't mean i'm right any more than it means that we're right but it does mean that we have to think for ourselves i love you i may not agree with what you're saying but i will fight to the death of myself to try to censor you all right well i will also fight to your death in this cause enjoy the lug nuts <laughs> what's the team no, that that is that is the team. It was just hmm. that was that was just some perfect David Feldman time in there. I, I You're like nuts. I love you. I got to get this show up. Thank <laughs> all right, all right. Love you too, David. Love you too. Bye.